see, you want to become a music photographer. Happy days, it's great crack. But there's some things that you need when you want to enter into this profession. Let's have a chat about them. Well, what about you guys? What's the crack? How's it going? Hope you're all keeping well today. Hope everything is good where you are. Music photography is so much fun. It can be really stressful, but it is so much fun. You get to go to different venues, get to travel around, meet different people, photograph artists, get different styles, different looks. Heck, maybe along the way you even get to photograph your favourite artist too, so that can be an extra buzz. But there's some things that you really need if you want to enter into this field. In the early days of this channel, I did a video where I covered six tips on how to become a music photographer, which you can check out that video in the top right hand corner there. Try not to cringe too much. It's, uh, it's early video days for me, so I wasn't as confident in front of the camera, but now it's my, so much more different. But I just gave my own personal tips on how you can become a music photographer. So yeah, if you wanna check that out, just hit it in the top right hand corner. So I more or less wanted to extend on from that video for today's topic, where I more wanted to discuss things that you need to become a music photographer. And you know what it's like, you go onto YouTube, websites, talk to people, and there's so many different tips and tricks and advices to hear. But I just wanted to cover just my own personal things off what you need if you wanna enter this profession. So that way when you start going out and taking photographs at gigs, you can feel a little bit more prepared. So these are just five things that you need to become a music photographer. But before I do that, I just have to say thank you very much for coming to check out this content. It's always greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, head down, like the video, share, subscribe, and hit the wee bell icon so that you can stay up to date with future videos where I'll talk about all things photography related on this channel. And if you find this video was quite helpful and you like more and more, well, yeah, just, just subscribe, hit the wee bell, share some love. You can come and say hi on my social media channels too. They're done in the description. So yeah, just share love and just come and say hi and hit the wee subscribe button. The more you do that, the more content I get to push out. So the first thing that you really need, and I can't stress this enough, if you're going into a photo pit or going to a gig, heck, even if you're not photographing it and you're just attending the concert, the one thing that you really need is earplugs. Start protecting your hearing because if you're in a photo pit, you're really close to amps and it's all really loud depending on the venues that you're at. So start protecting your hearing. So I recommend things like the D-Buds. I do a review of these, which again, you can hit in the top right hand corner. Selfless little plug there. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, bring earplugs. It doesn't matter what type it could be. The likes of these guys, it could be ones that you pick up in the pound store, you know, the little store foam ones as you stick in your ear, start protecting your hearing because in 2011, I, I, I didn't really think about things like earplugs and all back then, but in 2011, I was at a gig and I was at the front row and I was there for the whole night and I just had a guitar amp right in front of me and I pretty much just, all that's all I could hear for an entire week. So I said to myself, from there on in, I need to start protecting my hearing. So yeah, just bring earplugs. Doesn't matter what sort of type that you bring. Okay, so the second thing that you need, and this is something that you need to do when you become a music photographer, and that is really up your networking game. So start promoting yourself a lot more. You'll put all your photographs on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I know I know this is a given when it comes to any sort of field of photography, but music photography especially, because that's where you'll get the bands, you'll get the management, you'll get the PRs, you'll get the venues that will look at your photos, see them, start sharing with them. You'll see the fans too. Whether it's a big gig or a local gig, just stick your photos up, start talking, start tagging, hashtag as well there's different sort of pages that you can join into like how to become a rock photographer audio love official raw concert on these are all just pages on Instagram that I always recommend that you sort of follow along because you get to see other music photographers so also following along with other music photographers means that you get to up your style see different sort of techniques that are involved so really start upgrading your networking ability because you know you should really start pushing yourself out a lot more and most of the time I work with with journalists when I want to get a photo pass so I have to
have to network with them and I've worked with a lot of different sort of brands over the years but you also have to talk with band management, term managers, PR companies too just to get a photo pass, just to get in for that first three songs. So really start up in your networking and start pushing yourself out a lot more and don't be afraid to reach out if you feel like you know there's a gig that you want to work at and it's, it's only just down the road you know message the band's uh, PR company or find out who their manager are and just say hey look you know I see this gig is coming up do you mind if I come and take some photographs I'm happy enough to send you the photos afterwards some of them will say no but you never know because most of the time they will actually say yeah and the more you keep doing that and the more you say oh look here they're coming here and they're coming here you can then say oh can I come and do this and you start building up a rapport so it never hurts to just stick yourself out there because not everybody's going to come to you you should start pushing yourself out so yeah really up your networking game the third thing that you really need when it comes to music photography is start working on your exposure start understanding exposure for gigs because it is a really hard thing to nail down because it's such a difficult environment you don't have control of the lights everything is dark and there's so much movement and all you don't have as much control so start taking control of your exposure when I go and shoot a gig I always shoot in manual the reason why I shoot in manual is because I'm in control of my exposure so that way I can set a fast enough shutter speed I go from anywhere between 125th of a second up to maybe about 250th or depending on the gig if it's quite bright maybe even 400th of a second so you need to work with faster shutter speeds but the slower the shutter speed you're going to get like movement or anything like that so my base point is generally 125th of a second and if i need to go faster i can do so if i want to freeze more movement you also want to think about your aperture too so you want to let in as much light as possible I generally work anywhere between f2.8 and f4 but if you have a lens that opens up more to like 1.8 or 1.4 that's generally very good too so look out for lenses that can let in more light I'm going to be talking about that in a little sec so you want to have your aperture quite wide open but most importantly your ISO your ISO is the biggest thing that you want to look at when it comes to music photography because even though you have a fast shutter speed and you're letting in a lot of light through your aperture it still doesn't seem like enough especially if you're in a really dark like I've been in gigs where there's barely any lights on at all like the the lights that I have on right now you probably are giving me more lights than what some venues have ever given me so high ISOs is what really is going to bring out your photographs a lot more so it can be anywhere between 800 1600 even all the way up to 3200 so you're working in those higher ISOs and don't be afraid of noise it can actually really add a little bit of grit to your photograph but yeah ISO is what you're going to play with the most so I'll generally have my shutter speed and my aperture set whenever I go and take it and I don't touch those not too often after definitely I don't touch so the speed maybe changes a little bit but depending on the lights I'll maybe move my ISO up and down as I go along try not to play with auto ISO uh, more actually just manually change it yourself so you've got the two things you've, you've got set in shutter speed and aperture but then maybe change your ISO here now that's what I always do as a rule of thumb but you only really get those sort of things if you play with manual but then exposure also plays into this next tip and that's where you really need to start thinking about your gear cameras not too worried about where it comes to cameras it's more things like lenses so you need to have lenses that can let in quite a lot of light because not all lenses can open up to 2.8 1.8 or anything like that like if you get your first digital slr and you're using the kit lens that's that's okay to start off with but when you start zooming in the apertures close over and you don't get as much light allowed in so you have to start looking at lenses that let in more it can maybe be constant apertures to open up to but the good thing is you don't have to spend big money because that's where things can get a little bit daunting you can sit and go okay i need a zoom lens that has a constant aperture and i need like something like an f 2.8 to <laughs> keep all that light come, coming in for me so okay there's a 24 to 70 f 2.8 and most of those lenses are generally anywhere between like seven eight hundred pounds onwards and that can be like uh no, you don't, you don't need to go straight into that. You can get cheaper equipment. Like for me, this little 24mm f2.8 that I use on my Sony here, 
That's still pretty good for concert photography. It's wider angle and it keeps a constant aperture of f2.8. This lens is only about two, three hundred pounds or you can get the most popular lens that you should get if you're ever thinking about the first lens that you should get for your digital SLR or mirrorless camera and pick up like a little nifty 50. So a 50 millimeter f1.8 never does any harm and they generally cost anywhere between 100 to 200 pounds and i've used those type of lenses before with concert photography and you get amazing results from them plus you're not breaking the bank and you have a lens there that suits those sort of subjects i mean especially with a 50 mil you can maybe stand a little further back too so you're not in the musician's face so yeah when it comes to gear sit and think about more your lens and then as time goes on you can start understanding your camera a bit more i where cameras are concerned i would more use things that have a sensor like an APS-C sensor but most definitely full frame so if you get an APS-C sensor to start off with happy days that's what is really good for music photography anything smaller than that like micro four thirds or one inch it's not a lot of sensor width so you you don't get as much of a light spread or anything so think about APS-C and then work your way up and you can maybe work into full frame like I use full frame here but when I started off I was APS-C and I was still getting amazing results for my concert photography so make sure you have a camera that has a good size sensor to allow in again more of that light to happen too so and also start and think about things that have uh, a continuous shutter so some cameras might not have as many frames per second whereas nowadays you're seeing cameras that are going up into anywhere between 10 frames per second where if you're shooting you can go so that way you have more photographs of one thing but the slower that is the less photos you might have and maybe you've let, lost out on a moment too so yeah th those are the sort of things i would sit and think about when it comes to gear most importantly when it comes to gear too is bring spares this is just a little add-in with the gear bring spares it doesn't matter if you're only going to be there for an hour or if you're going to be there for a full day bring spare memory cards bring spare batteries bring spare bring a spare camera or anything like that i mean you can see here from this photograph this was what all i brought whenever i went to work at snow patrol when they played ward park a couple of years back this is ward park three so i had two cameras i had a couple of lenses i had loads of memory cards i had plenty of batteries to get me through the day so always bring spares it's better to have them and not need them and when it's all been said and done the one thing that you should really do when it comes to music photography is just get out there i know right now it's not as easy to get out there and take photographs because all these lockdowns and all like that but when the gigs get happening again just get out there it doesn't have to be you know iron maiden performing in your local arena or anything or metallica something like that it could be like a little local band that is playing the bars just go down snap them that ties into your networking if you've got new gear to bring it along so that way you can experiment too so you're not as pressurized if you go and work with the local bands plus you get to share your photographs with them and you can get more work too and when you start building up your networking that can also then uh, allow you for more jobs it can maybe even allow you for bigger jobs you might even get to go on tours or anything so it all starts with just going out there of course wait for your lockdowns to clear up and when gigs start happening again but when that all happens just get out there whenever i was talking in my six tips on how to become a music photographer the one thing that i have said and i will say until the day i die is go out and support your local bands so it doesn't have to be just you go and take photos and then just leave go and support them go and listen to them go buy their cds go buy their t-shirts and all go and give them money go and say look yo oh here i took photographs of your gig here here's the photographs if you ever want to do a photo shoot or something like that you know i'm available come and drop me a message i'll give you a deal or something or maybe i'll give you it for free and then after you know it's all these things that really build up and why i'm so passionate about supporting your local acts so yeah just when and if you can get out there yeah i hope this video was helpful for you guys again it was, it's just my own personal tips on what you really need to become a music photographer because it's easy to sit and think about how you can become one but it's what you need to start bringing in 
to how you start becoming a much more respected and more highly regarded music photographer. All these different things play a big role. Gear, exposure, yeah, that's how you get the best photographs that you can. But when it comes down to it, it's things like networking, going out to concerts too, and how you can just become a much more well-renowned photographer and then you could start going on tours and working closer with bands, working for bigger gigs. I mean, I've been doing this for well over 10 years, so I have done and yeah, it took some time for me to start getting bigger gigs, but when you get it, it's a really good feeling. So hopefully this list was helpful for you. And again, remember, get yourself some earplugs, whether you get the D buds or anything like that, just go out there, do all these things and yeah, just start enjoying it. Try not to stress too much, especially where money or anything like that is concerned for your gear. Try not to stress too much. Just go out, have fun. Yeah, so what sort of things do you need whenever it comes to being a music photographer? Well, let me know in the comments down below of your own personal needs. Do you want to become a music photographer as well and you find this list or the other video helped you at all? Again, let me know in the comments down below. I hope this video has helped you too. While you're down there, don't be afraid to like, share, subscribe, hit the wee bell icon so that you can stay up to date with future videos. It's always greatly appreciated. But until then folks, do take care of yourselves and enjoy the rest of your day.